Hello, hello, and welcome back to Runners Roundtable, where this season I'm talking to different female run coaches, and I am speaking to Allison Gilliard today. We're going to talk all about running and your running history, your running story, but before we get into any of that, I'm going to start off with a question. So before you even introduce yourself, sure. I want you to answer this question for us and then we'll okay. build on that. Okay. In your experience, in your opinion, what is the number one misconception that people have about running? That you have to run the entire thing without stopping, that you can't walk, that you're not a runner unless you run the entire time. Okay. We're going to unpack that because <laughs> I, that's why I was, I was like, well, I wonder what she's going to say, <laughs> but we're going to unpack that. So before we unpack that, I just wanted to start off with that because <laughs> that's a great way to set the tone for this conversation. And for people that are listening to this, because a lot of people have that misconception that you have to run straight, quote unquote, run straight to be yeah, a runner. Yeah. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> No. So tell us about yourself, your running history, how you got into running, and maybe if you can share also how you feel you've evolved as a runner. Sure. So uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm very excited because normally I'm the one asking questions on the podcast that I have. So that's huge. Um, I've been running for a little over 10 years. Um, it kind of like with most people, you kind of go through ebbs and flows. So it's not been a consistent 10 years, but I actually started off as a century bike rider. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually couldn't run from like my front door to the mailbox. Like that's completely different than cycling. So, um, we would go all over the state of Alabama. It was a family thing that we did and we just, we had the best time. Several of my uh, biking friends that I met, they started running as cross training. And they're like, this is really healthy. Da, da, da. And I was like, ooh, that is no. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that I was really craving, because at the time we were living in this beautiful rural town of Jackson, Alabama. So there's not much to do there. But I was craving community. And I was really craving women, like, like. I wanted to be with other moms. I had two small children at the time. I wanted to be that mom that could stay and do things with my kids, like, and not be winded. So cycling was one thing that got me, but I really was missing that connection with other women that were walking through life together. And so we actually were in a fire prevention parade in Jackson, Alabama, because that's what you do, fire prevention parade. And one of my son's good friends, mom's was right there. And she was telling me she was starting Gals for His Glory. And it was going to be a group that would meet and do Couch to 5K. And so we were training with that. But then it was like devotion. And it just, it was the community. So I was terrified about going because I was like, I'm not a runner. Um, I can cycle 100 miles, but I can't run. Like, again, I can't run very far. So um, started with that. And I say that running found me because mm -hmm. again, I was there for the people. I was there for the community. Um, and that's been life changing for me. I am still, even though we live about 45 minutes away now from Jackson, I still, those are my best friends, that running community. Um, and that's how I met a lot of people. That's how I really went out of my comfort zone. Um, because they, they would push you you know, and you would push them. And if you missed a day, they were like, well, where are you at? You know? And so I, I love that. And that's really helped make me who I am and, and put roots down as far as like what running means to me. Um, as far as evolving, <laughs> I'm, I'm what you call an Athena runner. So I'm a bigger runner. Um, and I've embraced that. Like I've, I've embraced the fact that I'm not going to be the athlete I was in high school when I played softball and tennis and, and basketball, but I can still do things that I can do until I'm 80, 90, a hundred years old. So, and running gives me that, um, running for me is again, I, I just think about how incredible our running community is here in Mobile, Alabama. So like last night, 
we met up at one of my favorite shopping stores, Do Goods. And so like all of their stuff that they sell is for, has a purpose or a ministry or something behind it. And we met up because yesterday was Human Trafficking Awareness Day. And so we just put word out. We're like, hey, let's all get together. Let's all run. And then people shop different products that help survivors of human trafficking. And so that's our running community mobile. Like we, we find a run with a purpose and that's what we do. So it's evolving in the sense of, I love getting to know people's stories, which is why our training program and podcast is called run your story. Cause we all started out somewhere. We all started hitting the pavement for whatever reason, whether it was health, whether for me it was community, whether it was, Hey, I want to try to challenge myself. Whatever it is, there's a reason why we started. I love all of that, (laughs) but I especially love the run your story bit of it because I am so big on storytelling Mm -hmm. and I'm just a lover of words, just such a lover of words, which is why I like doing this (laughs) because I'm using a lot of words and I'm talking, right? (laughs) So I'm such a lover of words because running really is become your, your story. Right. So like, even when I ask like, what's your running story, it is that it's like, Definitely. what's the story. And you're the main character in that, that particular story. So I love that you're focusing on the story piece because a big part of running are the words we're telling ourselves. Yeah. 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 Right. right? It's like, mental. Running is mental and we get in our own heads. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's, you know, I tell people, and I even say it for myself too, that part of why I like running or, you know, I, I'm also someone like, I think everyone has a movement modality that really speaks to them. Mm-hmm. I'm a lover of runner of running. I want everyone to run, but yeah. I also recognize <laughs> that like running may not be the thing for everybody. Mm-hmm. But one of the reasons why I love running so much is because I spend so much time in my head And it's time to either learn how to be my biggest cheerleader or fall victim to the biggest critic. Mm -hmm. In either case, there's something to be proud of. And again, it's that story that I'm telling myself when Mm -hmm. I'm running, right? Like this morning I had five miles, like easy aerobic, right? And as I'm running, I'm like, okay, like I know this is easy, but this sucks and I'm so (laughs) tired and it was five miles. And I, you know, I told myself like, just try to get to one mile. And you know, the story started to create of like, uh, two miles. I still have three miles to go, uh, three, I still have two. Okay. At least I'm going down. Mm -hmm. And it really is this opportunity every single run to tune into what are the words you're telling yourself? Mm -hmm. And are you using words that are going to help you Or are you using words that are going to add to a sense of the run being more effortful? So I really appreciate that. And I wonder how that came to be for you and how that impacts you as a coach and and as a runner. Uh, As far as the run your story like that. Sure. Yeah. So I so I, over the years have had the opportunity, again, I just, I feel like running has opened up doors and my husband would tell you, I have more friends that are runners than I do that are non-runners. I mean, it's just, we, we don't keep secrets in the running community. Like we, we find our product and we're like, dude, try this out. You know, like we, and as you said, cheerleaders, like we are each other's cheerleaders. Like you may think, oh man, that was such a crappy five miles, but someone's going to look at you and be like, whoa, Stephanie, like that was such a great pace. Or I can't believe you did five miles. Like it's so, I just, I love the running community. I love the support. And I think that that's the thing that we look at. We're like, man, if the whole world was running, like we would all be cheerleaders. (laughs) So, um, I was driving one day to work. I used to, um, so kind of like short, long story here. Um, my degree is athletic training. So I went to school thinking I was going to work with high schoolers and that just never happened. Um, and I actually started working with a sports chiropractor, which is where I met a lot of, a lot of runners. And then I transitioned to a running store and, uh, I was in the past, I had gone there when I was in school, like I worked while I was going back to school and, um, got to meet again, running uh, runners learned a lot about biomechanics and I mean just so much but I, again I just feel like so many doors were opening up and preparing me for this 
Um, in the past, when I lived in Jackson, I had the opportunity to mentor families and we did uh, fitness and how to like proper nutrition, that sort of thing. And so we would do like, we taught kids how to run, how, we used Couch to 5K, taught them how to run that. And then we did uh, family obstacle courses. So I mean, it was just things like that, that we did. And I was, ne I would never consider myself a coach back then. Um, and then over the years, again, just doors kept opening. And so I had the opportunity to mentor uh, other runners. And so through our local running store, and I just, it was one of the things that I just fell in love with. So we were actually training for Battleship 12K, which is a, a huge run in our area. It's always Veterans Day weekend. It's massive. It's patriotic. It's a stellar, you couldn't ask for a better race like first mile all downhill so like you're already like yes, oh you're great you that's great <laughs> uh, it's you have people that rock it you have I just, it's incredible so we were training for this and I actually I believe that there's a trifecta when it comes to um running with with coaches and that is you have a solid team and so I had friends that um again I say find your people that's like my my thing find your people and find people that believe in you and you believe in them. And, uh, and so I had, I have two strength coaches that are on the runner story team. And then we have a yoga instructor and then we have mentors. And so those are people that they just want to come out. They want to have a good time. They love running. They want to get back to the community and, and they believe in runner story. So I was driving one day to work, um, going back to answer your question, <laughs> driving to work. It was a beautiful day and it just dawned on me that we all have a story to tell. And a lot of times in our races at the end, we don't necessarily know how someone got to where they are. We mm. don't, we just see them. Oh, wow. Like they just ran that in like a sub 20. How did they do that? You know, like what's their story? Um, we saw some, you know, is this person that their 5k is taking them an hour? Like what's their story? You know, like what is happening? We don't know where they are. And, um, and so we never really have enough time to get to know each other. And so I just started just thinking about it. And I kind of just, I sent my husband a text and I was like, I feel like I'm being called to do this, like to do this podcast. And, uh, and this training, pro like this, I feel like I'm supposed to become a coach, like a coach. Um, and so I just started, I started talking with different people, started talking again with the team that was with run your story, it was called something else at the time because we were with a, a running store. And so I just started talking with them and they were like, oh yeah, definitely. Like we, whatever you want to do, we're here for you. And then the people that we were training, they were like, this is the best time. Like I had one guy who he said he would journal and he said Tuesdays and Saturdays, he would put in there, met with my friends and, you know, like suffer together or train together, whatever it was. So, but it's, the connection that we became friends, like strangers became family. And it was just this all encompassing thing. And, uh, and that's where runner story, the podcast came is because I wanted to know how people got to where they are. We are so creatures of comparison and we say it all the time <laughs> of, you know, your race, your pace, but do we really believe that? Mm -hmm. So we're so used to saying, oh man, like, why can't I be as fast as that girl? Or why can't I look like that as a runner? When we're forgetting that there are people that can't run, you know, or that want to, but they're afraid to. And so one of the things that I have learned from, as we were talking earlier, all the nuggets that, that we get to listen to and learn, it's, it has so helped me because one of the things I say in my podcast is that their story becomes a part of my story and we're just deepened. Like we become even deeper as a community. And that was the goal is to deepen our community. And then also if somebody was like, Oh, I'm nervous about wanting to go run or walk or whatever it is that people could be like, go listen to run your story because these are local people that want to, th that they started out somewhere too. They didn't just get up and go run. Like they may have, you know, <laughs> they may have that person. But they got somewhere and how they got there is important. And so we asked some fun questions too. Like one of the questions we asked is like, what's your run story? And then what's your favorite memory? What are some lessons that you've learned from running? Because that's huge. And I've always been a big advocate that there's learning is so essential, but there's just something to be learned in sport. 
whether it's a team sport or an individual sport, you push your, you, you learn to push past being uncomfortable. And, and there's so many things you learn more about yourself than you ever did. And, uh, and so that's something that I, I've instilled in my children. And, and, you know, I was like, I don't care what sport you play. You just, you got to play something. You got to be active and, and yeah, it's taken off our, our communities. Again, I say Mobile, Alabama has the best running community. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like, think I want to go there now. <laughs> right. I have. Come on, well, Debbie, let's go. <laughs> yeah. One of my, one of my good friends is up in Skokie and Illinois. And anytime she posts anything, Sabrina, if you listen to this, hi, I'm like, <laughs> I want to go there. Like, wait, what? I want to be there too. So yeah. I love that because for multiple reasons, right? One, it's like, here's a community, like you have such a strong basis in community. And from what I hear from you, community is something that you value tremendously. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And just to hear, and it's the same thing with my friend Sabrina of like, wait, I really want community and we're going to do community through running and you mm-hmm. create that. So yeah. it's so inspiring to hear for myself here in my Miami community of of really building community. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of similar to you in that it's very much so like this interest in women and getting women to, to run or to walk or to, to come out and move their bodies. Mm -hmm. So I love that because again, it's like inspiring to hear it, but then it's also this great reminder to anyone that's listening to this, that if you are desiring community and maybe that community doesn't exist where you're at or in the way you would want it, you're totally empowered to start to create. That's right. that Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and that's one thing I always tell people as well, where it's like, reach out, like be vulnerable, mm-hmm. be vulnerable mm-hmm. for a moment and reach out to your friends and say, Hey, who wants to go for a walk with me? Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time and you mentioned it, and that's like one of the threads I want to pull here of, you have a lot of people who want to run, mm-hmm. but who are afraid to do it. And I have found in my experience or in talking to people, the fear is based in what they think they can do Mm. and in what they perceive someone who does that movement to look like. Mm. Which Mm -hmm. drives me bananas. (laughs) I'm very much like, I I tell myself all the time, I'm like, movement is medicine. Movement is medicine. Movement is medicine. Mm -hmm. So as you were building this community and even thinking about the people that you work with one-to-one in your coaching or in group coaching or just in general, right? Mm -hmm. Like all the people you interact with in the running community, how do you get them to embrace that community aspect and like, let that community aspect be louder Mm -hmm. than any of the fears they may have. Uh, I think for me, it's been being authentic. It's been, as you said, being vulnerable. You know, I, I love the fact that I have people that, uh, again, we live in, in Mobile, Alabama. And so everything is word of mouth. Like you can post all day on social media, but we are, we are talkers. And so We'll, we'll know whether or not to go support something or do something um, based on, on word of mouth. And so it's, it's huge to me. And, uh, and I'm loud. Like, you're going to hear me from a distance. <laughs> uh, I'm that true Southern, you're going to hear me roar type girl. So um, I, I think, honestly, it's just being genuine and being who you are. Again, like I said, you know, I, I'm a bigger runner. I'm not... Um, as much as I would love and as much as I have the cook bucks of all the Olympians, you know, of like how to eat and all this, I'm still a bigger girl. You know, when I do triathlons, I'm in the Athena category and, and I'm okay. I've embraced that. Um, I had a friend, she became a friend. She became a really good friend of mine, but we were doing, um, it's called anchored women at our church. And it was a, a get our community moving, get the women because your body's mm. temple. You have this one body. What are you going to do with it? And so you can't be the hands and feet of Jesus. If you're, you know, sick because you're not taking care of yourself. So diseases are different, but if you're, what you're putting in your body and what you're, as you said, movement is medicine. Like you got to gather, you got to move. Um, and so we, our church created anchored women and it was huge. And I had this girl come up to me, she goes, please don't take this the wrong way. She goes, but I went, I listened to you talk. And then I went home and I told my husband, if she can do it, I can do it because of how you looked, because you weren't this this very tiny person. There's nothing wrong with that. I would love to be that, but that's just not how I'm built. 
And so, uh, you know, I, I jokingly say I'm built like a linebacker. I mean, I'm, (laughs) (laughs) but I will, again, I've learned to embrace that. I've learned that, you know, again, at triathlons and running events, you see people all the time running of different body shapes of their, and again, they're carrying their story with them. There's a Mm -hmm. reason why they're out there. And so I, I look no longer at the person, but I look at their story. And I say, mm-hmm. what is getting you here? Uh, one of my guys will tell you um, that he was, he's on an upcoming podcast. And I could have listened to him talk for hours because he talks about, as you said, like how to get over that fear because at the time he couldn't even walk a mile, but he was, just, he was going through a divorce and a really tough time. And he knew he needed to move and he just, he found the community. So, and he loved it. Like he's coming back for our training program. He did Battleship 12K and, and we were so excited for him. And he's, he's coming back. We have a Zelia trail that's coming in March that we're training for. And so uh, he's, he's sold. Like, he's like, I will move. I will never go back to my old ways again. And that's what I want. I, as a coach, my emphasis is on taking people that um, either are coming back from running because they're injured or they lost their love of running. Um, and then taking people that have those misconceptions about running or don't really understand what being a runner really is, um, and taking them and saying, here's what we do as a community. Here's what we do as a training session and, and going from there, because we're doing it together. We're, I write the program, but we're out there together and you can hate it as much as I hate it. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, and we, we dig at our strength coaches because they're making us work, you know, we, we love our yoga instructor because, you know, she's nice and gentle and everything, <laughs> but we, we do, we're suffering together and, but running should be fun and it should be community. And, you know, I, when, I love one of the questions that you said and uh, that you asked, and that is like, what's your philosophy of coaching? And mm-hmm. I, there's two things that I tell people, and that is the hardest part of running is lacing up your running shoes. You can get that done. You're already a hundred percent. You know, um, and then the other thing is there's no such thing as a bad run. Um, as you said, you were looking at that five miles, but but you did the five miles. Your body oh, yeah. did the five miles. And so um, for me, it's been, you know, we used to hear the phrase like junk miles or all like, you know, that just wasn't my best. OK, but you still got out there and you did it. The mileage or the time is there. And so for me, that's kind of been like the. I guess the mantra for runner story is you're running your story, but, and you've already made the hardest decision and that was to come sign up and to do, and you put on your running shoes, like got there and you did it. We find excuses all the time. Oh, Um, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and you, and here's the thing too, you have to give yourself grace because life continues, life goes on. And as I tell, as I tell those that I train, I'm like, no, you shouldn't make your running program, your focus you, you embrace it, you make it a part of life. Yeah. It becomes a habit, you know, of like, okay, now I need to go out there and do it. If you're stressing and you're like, oh man, I didn't put in my mileage today and you're freaking out and you don't get a good night's sleep, then guess what? You're not going to be any good the next day. So it's really about, uh, it's again, it's really about finding your people and, and having them tell you it's okay. Take a deep breath. And, and you just start over the next day. Yeah. And that's also important for everyone to kind of remember, right? Where the running doesn't happen in a vacuum. Like running Mm -hmm. is a part of your life. Like it is something for a lot of people, at least when I'm thinking of the population that you like to work with, right? Like someone who's coming back to running, that implies that they have not been running for a right, bit. Right. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden you are reintroducing this practice into your life. You have to make space for it. You have to make the adjustments for it. So it's just such a beautiful reminder for everyone that's listening that running is something we add to our lives. It's mm-hmm. not something that exists. Right. And I, and even hearing what you were saying too, and like the, the way you were reframing even my five mile run, it's that reminder of okay, yeah, it may have been challenging, but guess what? You still did it and you were able to do it. Like those are the implications, right? Like you're able to do it. And even for myself, I have those moments where I have to remind myself, okay, but I'm still capable of doing Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Where I struggled 
kind of going back to something we said earlier, it's like where I struggled was with the mental piece. Right. My yeah. body yeah. did it. It was yeah. just my brain and how mm-hmm. I was perceiving it mm-hmm. and how I was storing it into memory. That yeah. was the issue. It wasn't my body. My body mm-hmm. did it. Yeah. But the story, again, the story that I'm starting <laughs> to create around the run, that's that's what really comes into play. And I also just appreciate so much that you talk about, you know, how did people get there? Because again, I think it's really important. And I say this as someone whose identity includes runner, Mm -hmm. includes that label, like being a runner is a huge part of my identity, but it's also not the entirety of my identity. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. when I hear what you're speaking of what you're doing with run your story or talking to people, it's also like, again, it's following I like to think of us ourselves as like a, like a blank canvas kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. and that each experience is just a different color on mm-hmm. that canvas. Mm-hmm. You can't look at each individual color and understand who the person is, but when That's you right. step back and you see it all together, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I yeah. get you. you know? <laughs> and I feel like That's what you're doing too. And that is so, so powerful because us runners, I include myself in this, have a tendency to attach value, worth, goodness, badness, progress to how we perform mm-hmm. as runners. Mm-hmm. So I just love that. And I also, and I, you know, I listen, I also teach yoga. So I appreciate yeah. everybody <laughs> who combines different modalities mm-hmm. because again, I think it's important for runners to remember that you are not just a runner. Yes, yeah. a runner is part of who you are, That's right. but you're so much more. And mm-hmm. being a runner means that you do more than run. That's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hands so down. I love all of that. How do you how did you become a coach or at what point in all of your particular running story, did you say, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do the coaching. I'm going to go. I have been saying, I'm like, I'm like, oh, we're making it official. That's what I've been calling it. We're making it official by doing the training and getting yeah, the certification. Yeah. So at what point did you do that? And then second to that is tell us a little bit about your process as a coach you know, the intake form, how are people reaching out to you? Mm -hmm. How are you determining whether athletes are a good fit with you and whether you'd be a good fit for them? So just the entirety, your coaching story, and then the process of coming to work with you as a coach. So great question. Um, I was at the local running store and I was a running mentor for a, a few years and then COVID hit. And, and we had actually put on my husband and I, who he's a computer science teacher, made these epic bibs because they had canceled our race mm-hmm. that, um, that the community did, um, that our runners had been training for. And so we just, we were outside, we social distance and, you know, we put on a little race. And so that for me was kind of like a, a, a defining moment where I was like, this is something that I might would want to do might want to consider doing. However, again, going back to embracing how I look, I did not think anybody would want me as a running coach because I'm a bigger coach. I'm a bigger girl. And so that I, as you said, like I allowed myself to get in my own head. And, um, and that was, that's a scary thing. Um, but I started just talking with different people. Uh, I came back, I was asked to be the training coordinator for the upcoming Battleship 12K. And so that's when I got my strength coaches, I got the running mentors. And I was like, you know, if I'm writing this program, I wanna write it correctly. I wanna do it the best I can. And the only way I know how to do that is by becoming a coach. So um, the the local running store was like, yeah, we'll help you out. And so I took the course and I I hate taking tests. Oh my gosh, like I I love learning. I hate testing, oh, ugh. So, (laughs) But I, you know, and I'm so thankful because I learned so much from that training from RRCA. So thankful because it really, one of the questions that they, they, that they said was, you know, we go over like, again, you, you live in Florida, so you understand the heat and humidity. Mm -hmm. And of course they were like, you know, if you're a guy, you know, wear, you know, just shorts and that's it. And if you're a female shorts and sports bra, and I was like, 
okay, question, <laughs> bigger girl here, what do I do? And that is something that one of the instructors um, shared, and that is, it is the world's problem by judging you how you look, not yours. You go out, and I was like, okay, um, I've done it one time. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Like that was, um, and I just, I started talking to different women about it. And I also love that I didn't have to create a training plan based on mileage. I could create it based on time. Mm -hmm. And that was a game changer. Um, and so I love that because, you know, sometimes we're like, you know, I, I know I have this race coming up. I know I need to get in the mileage, but what you do in 45 minutes can be the exact same mileage that you put in. But psychologically, it's just something about, I only have to run 45 minutes. Yep. You know? And so, um, and they, they love that. And then I started talking about like to the team of runner story. And I was like, this is how I want to coach is based on time. And they were like, I love that. And just the response. And I was like, this is, this is how we're going. So that's, that's how my training plans are built. Um, I do group training. I, I think that there is, I, I do a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, but my specialty really is like, I want a group of people to come together mm -hmm. to experience life together, to grow together. We did, um, during Thanksgiving, we had the Turkey trot. So we did that. And then that night, a whole group of us got together from the their running group and we just played games and had fun. And before that, for Battleship 12K, the night before, we had a pre-race dinner and we all got together. Oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> so that, those are just things that we do um, as far as the friendships that are made, you know, and that's, that's what I want. And again, we already have different groups here in Mobile. We have Run 251. We have a group called Trail Yeah because they're getting trails in. Um, and so those people actually, like I use them as a resource because I'm a newbie on the trails. And so I have one of the guys that he's like, him and his wife, they, anything I need, I'm like, hey, will you guys come lead this trail run? Absolutely, they will. And so again, it's a group thing. It's, it's runner's story. But as I tell um, all of those that I interview, I'm like, this is your story. This is your podcast. I just get to be the vessel that, that gets to deliver it. That's it, you know? Um, and, and for the training program, like we're doing this together, you know, and we use group me. So that way they yeah. know like, Hey, if somebody like if we have a 50 minute run, you know, and that's a on your own run, then they can post in there. Hey, I'm meeting at so-and-so park. And then anybody want to join me at that time. And that's been, that's been the cool thing is seeing them come together on their own. Um, and so I don't, I don't know that that's, Community is everything for me for running. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that. And I even thought, you know, as I was, as I was listening to you speak, it's, you have such a beautiful run story because it's punctuated by these really clarifying moments for you mm -hmm. that have led you to take action. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. again, it's, it's that idea of, wait, I want community. And then sitting with yourself with it of like, this doesn't exist. So I'm going to create it, right? Like yeah. it's, it's all of this and the basis of community. I mean, my heart, like if I was an emoji, I would have the emoji with the little heart <laughs> eyes like bursting with everything that you're saying. Because when I think of the power and I've, I've talked about this in other, in another discussion with someone where for me, when I started running and I'll briefly go over it, right? When I started running, it was because I wanted to be a role model for my daughters to run. I love and that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I started because of them, because I put them in a stroller and because of them, eventually running transformed into something I loved. But mm. how I got to that something I love was because I started running with people. Like mm. that was a real big game changer for me as a new runner. And that's what I try to tell people where it's like, it's your one connection away from truly falling in love with this sport. Ooh, All it that's takes. That's good. I, I mean, yeah. when you think about yeah. yourself, right? Like you can think, I mean, for me, I have no problem. For me, it was two connections and I can conjure those women in my mind mm. in an instant. Like those mm -hmm. women that were so pivotal for me. Yeah. Falling in love with this sport and how they not only invited me into the sport, but then also challenged me to be better and to think about things. Yeah, yeah. 
But I always think of that, how it's, we're really just one connection away because, and I'm someone who went through a period of time where I ran by myself, well, you know, pushing my kids in a stroller, sure. not really yeah. by myself, <laughs> but you know, like I ran with my kids in a stroller. Then I joined a running group where all we did is meet on Saturdays, right? Mm-hmm. So during the week, everyone was kind of on their own, but Saturday long runs, we did it together. And the woman who organized that particular group, it was a run walk. It was a Galloway group here in Miami. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. So it was a Galloway group, but she paired people together. Mm-hmm. No one was ever running by That's themselves. Right. Yeah, like yeah. there was always someone else you were running <laughs> with. So again, it's like that one connection that was real pivotal. And then we moved to Chicago for a year. And because we were only there for a year, this is what I tell myself. Like, I didn't really do much to get out into the communities to like meet people. But where I lived was very close. I was a block away from the lakefront trail. So even though I was running by myself, I never felt by myself because there was always people out there. Hello. Hi. Hey. (laughs) You know, you really don't feel like you're by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then we moved back and for a a long period of time, I just ran by myself and I would, you know, see people, but it was mostly in my neighborhood. Then the pandemic hit Mm. and the solo runner took on a totally different meaning. And I was like, oh, this is really solo. Like I was running by myself, but at least I would see other people here. I'm like really by myself. Yeah. And once things became a little bit safer to like meet again and run with people, I told myself, I'm going to go to a run club because I need to run with other people. Absolutely. And even if I don't run with other people, I need to be in an area where there are at least mm-hmm. other runners. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, during the pandemic, I just ran the same little loop around my house because obviously afraid of being around other people and like not really knowing people. So it was through that that I met the people that I run with now that I mm-hmm. met the people that on Saturdays, we wake up ridiculously early. <laughs> and we start our runs at 5am. It doesn't matter yeah. the distance. Like, yeah, like, yeah. I had some weekends, like I've had some weekends where it's like an eight mile run. And I'm like, it's cool. I'm starting at 5am. We're good. We're good. I'm gonna be done early. <laughs> so it's made, it's definitely, I'd say, so this was like, you know, early 2021, where I started to run with people again on that Saturday run. And it's definitely transformed once again, running for me where when you have other people, it's accountability, Mm -hmm. but without the guilt, I feel like sometimes, right? Like sometimes we're like, oh God, I have to go if I don't go, blah, blah, blah. But here it's like, oh, I'm actually excited. Like, yes, Mm -hmm. they're going to get me out the door. But then there's also that excitement of like, oh, I have this uninterrupted time with some of the people that I love to talk to the most, That's right. and she's something you shared earlier, right? Like there are no secrets, like there right. really <laughs> are. And it's not to say that, you know, you tell everybody everything, right, but right. it's to say that like the boundaries that prevent us from connecting with people, there's something about running next to someone, <laughs> like you're not looking at them, but you're talking, you can mm-hmm. hear each other breathe. You can hear the steps. It really does. It, it creates just such a, special level of intimacy that it's an interesting thing because, and I'm curious your thoughts on this. I always tell people, and again, you know, whenever I share anything, it's, it's anecdotally, but it's also to hopefully bridge the gap for some people as Mm -hmm. well, because I, I like to tell people find a run club, like go to a running group, do that. And my experience was that when I started that I went to a run club that I was like, Oh, I'm going to go to this run club. Yeah. I was the slowest runner. So I got left behind. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like there were, I'm like, okay, I want to run with people and talk about reframing it for myself where I was like, Oh, I really want to run with people, but I'm the slowest person. And I was like, well, at least I get to see other runners. Like that's what I would tell myself. <laughs> I'm like, at least I get to see other runners. So has that been your experience? Because community is so important important to you and community is something that it really does. I really, really do believe that community helps us commit more to the sport, Mm -hmm. but how do you talk to people who maybe they go to one run club or run one run community and they don't have the best experience where they Mm -hmm. feel like it's not for them. Mm -hmm. 
how do you get them to open up to the keep showing up or mm-hmm. check out a different group? Or is there one person? And that was like pretty big for me where it's like, oh, is there one person that looks like they kind of run my pace? And can I latch on to them? And yeah, hopefully, yeah. They don't, hopefully they don't get freaked out by the by the girl who's like, hey, can I run with you? Can I be with you? <laughs> So how do you get people to kind of open up to that, particularly when you're thinking of the that newer runner or that mm-hmm. runner that's coming back from injury or to your how we started this discussion to that misconception of, oh, I can't run without stopping. So how can I be here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this that's a great question. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's something that I had never thought about because uh we had had different, I've been to different fun runs and different running groups and that sort of thing. And yeah, there were times where I was left by myself, but you know, I had music in my ears. So I really wasn't, I was like, no, this is just me time. But I, I'm like you, I'm like, at least I'm, I started, started with yes. everybody, you know? <laughs> um, but you know, it wasn't, it didn't really dawn on me until we ended our training session and um, Chrissy, who does our yoga, she moved from Virginia and she shared a similar story where she wanted to go run with a running group. And they, she's like, they just love me. They just, and I think that that's a missing component of that. Wasn't community like that. And I'm not, I'm not digging, I'm not taking a dig at them. I'm just saying like, uh, and, and she did like, she would try to go back and she was just like, you know, and so she did try to find others. She goes, but I just wasn't, you know, she's like, I want to get, lost in a run, you know, like, Hey, let's have a good time. Like, let's chat and that sort of thing. But they were just so serious. Um, which is fine. If that's your jam, Hey, you, you be a serious runner. I'm going to crack jokes and talk about the heat and humidity and how I'm dying. Like that's going to be what I do. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I tell people is, uh, and so I bring that up to say like during our training program, she goes, you know, nobody ever ran alone or if they did, like they were in the middle. So like there'd be people up front together somebody in the middle and then people behind. So it was never like one person was on their own. Um, And it just, it built that community. People got to ask questions with one another. You got to have conversations. We do uh, run walk a little, a lot. We do endurance running. So we're not really necessarily like, let's focus on speed. Speed will come. It will get there. We'll have speed workout, but we're going to really focus on that community together and learn about each other. Um, Mm -hmm. My thing I don't like being a loner. So if I'm going to go to something, I'm going to drag a friend into it. And I'm going to be like, hey, come with me. So that would be a piece of advice. I'd be like, you know what? Find a friend that you can be like, you know what? I don't like this route. I want to go, but I want somebody to go with me. And even if that person's like, I don't really run. Hey, let's walk it out. Let's, you know, create your own route. Like, let's do something. But at least you've taken that step. Um, I am not one to do something by myself. I'm just going to be honest. Like, not going to happen. So I'm socially awkward when I don't know. (laughs) That's such a wonderful suggestion though. And and I'm like, huh, I didn't think about that. that, (laughs) It didn't occur to me to do that. I just thought like, Hey, I'm going to put myself out there and go by myself and hopefully it works. And, and I want to see, I want to add to that, right. Where like, there are different running communities. So anyone who's listening to this, I'm not bashing any of the running oh, absolutely not. That I, mean, tried yeah, to be sure. with. I think it's just it's nice to highlight that there are different types absolutely. of communities mm-hmm. and that you do have to put yourself out there to find which is the community that yes. aligns with your purpose for running mm-hmm. so for me and that's something where I've kind of I've had to get clarity around over the past few years of like yeah, I'm still going to do my speed workouts. I'm still going to work hard. I still have time goals. It's not to say that I don't, but it's when I run with my friends or like when I'm running in a group, I want to find that balance of running easy Mm -hmm. enough to have a conversation, but maybe also a little bit faster than what I would normally do on my own. So Mm -hmm. yes, there's that social component where I'm talking to people, but there's also that little bit of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to run a little faster than what I'm used to, but it's okay. Cause I'm with my friends and like, we're going to, yeah, yeah. right. So I think that's where I'm at, where it's like my, my run, when I run with people, I guess for me, when I run with people, my purpose is different. 
Mm -hmm. So when I was going out to that initial, those first few run clubs that I went to, it was, I went there with the intention of running with people Mm -hmm. and it's a, it was a run club that yes, you could run with people, but you have to be a little bit faster than what I wanted. (laughs) So like, so it was, it was just, so I point that out just to say that there's different kinds of community and that people show up with different intentions Mm -hmm. and it's okay for all those intentions to exist. There is us, there are enough runners, enough groups, enough spaces. There's enough running routes for you to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also helpful to have a little bit of clarity as to like, okay, what is it that I hope to get out of this particular Mm -hmm. experience? And then once you do, then Find the people that are going to support you in that. Don't let Mm -hmm. one experience be the experience that turns you off Mm -hmm. from doing it. Because again, I I come back to that, like you're just one connection away (laughs) from like really having this sport be transformative for Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So I, that's just so great. And I, I feel like the core of what you do and the, the core of everything you're putting out there is very much so community. And I just think of the people and, you know, I've thought of this for myself where it's like, you may be the person who brings people in, but it's the community Mm -hmm. and those friendships. That's what keeps people coming back. That's That's what keeps people committed. So it's, um, there's this saying, and I I've shared this before, and it's some I have it on you know screenshot on my phone because I like to come back to it where it's like all we can do is set the stage and hope grace shows up, Ooh, and yeah, yeah wow. it's just mm. so beautiful, right? And that's what I feel like you're doing, where you are setting the stage of community, and hopefully creating it as inviting as varied as possible that people show up and they allow what's going to happen to happen mm-hmm. and learn something about themselves because absolutely you know, that it right like we learn a lot about ourselves mm-hmm. when we're moving when we're running when we're having a struggle with a run like yeah yeah there's a lot there's a lot that we can learn about ourselves and i think it's also wonderful in your own way and then, I, and I just really, really want to point this out for people because I've said this before, where those of us who are in the running community, we are the biggest advocates and ambassadors for the running community. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank you for not shying away from like that woman who made that comment and like embracing it of, yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. Like that's why yeah. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want you to see that. Like you're not offending me. You're yeah. not offending me. Like, I'm glad you told me that mm-hmm. because I hope you then go tell five of your friends. <laughs> you know, the six of you come to the next group run. Yeah. So I want to thank you for embracing it, embodying it on multiple <laughs> ways, right? Like there's a sense of embodiment that you can't control because your body is your body, but also mm-hmm. embodying an acceptance of it, but also a celebration of it. Like I, that's at least maybe that's what I get where it's very much so like, you're like, I'm an Athena runner. Mm -hmm. I'm a bigger runner and it's fine. It's great (laughs) because that is part of what I see within the running community and kind of going back to that misconception, a piece of that is what we think runners look like. Mm, Absolutely. We think like, I I just, I, (laughs) I, you know, I always think of like social media, right? So I think of social media in terms of the running accounts that have the biggest followings. Like <laughs> this is always something I like to be aware of. And I'm like, okay, so either you're an elite runner and you look okay. like your typical <laughs> runner or you're a non-elite runner that has something else going. Like there's the non-elite runners. I feel like the runners that have the big accounts, there's advocacy is such a big part of their messaging as mm-hmm. runners. And I'm like, okay, so we have these two parts, but what about everybody in the middle? Like yeah, where, yeah. how are those varied experiences reflected? And again, I'm just so, I just want to say thank you for you for like owning who you are and celebrating that because people will see that people will hear that. And that little no that they had in their mind, maybe it doesn't turn into a full yes, but it becomes a maybe. Mm, 
Yeah. You're, you're making me tear up and I don't cry. So Oh, no, don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> I mean, cry if you want to cry. I mean, cry if you want to cry. <laughs> but I think it's also like, I, you know, and I, I think of myself too. And so I, I had, I always talk about on my Instagram, you know, like I'll share, oh, this is my 11th. I'm going into my 11th year of running and I'm so proud of it. And I posted, I think last week, it was like the picture of the medals that I had from, Mm. from last year. And I'm like, it's not even to show off. It's more just, I'm so proud. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) I can do that because if I were to let these images of elite runners Mm. dictate what I think a runner is, that's right then I wouldn't go out there and I wouldn't try. And even deeper to that, it's letting go for me, the that connection again to my pace does not determine my value. Like Ooh, I can still yes. do these. I can still Please run. Go, these yes. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> I can still do it. Absolutely. It's fine. So I have a question and this is probably one of my favorite, favorite questions to ask always is in your group coaching, you know, you have a lot of dynamics. You're talking a lot to people. Are there ever moments where you have to have difficult conversations with any of the athletes? And by difficult, you know, the, some of the examples I've given, it's like, oh, if they come to you and they're like, I saw this on Instagram yeah. and I want to do this. <laughs> like, that's always like, for me, that's a difficult conversation to have where it's like, okay, can we step back and like, let's take a look at what you're going through and like, what's the purpose here? Have you ever had to have those conversations with people or conversations where like someone is maybe either overreaching or there be, you know, injury prevention is such a huge thing for you too, of like, where you can see, Hey buddy, if you continue down this path, like Mm -hmm. injury is there. Do you have to have those conversations with people? And if so, how do you approach them? Um, I've been very fortunate that I have really good listeners. Uh, <laughs> that's not to say in the future it will be like that. Uh, I actually, I have two that are, so Tuesday we kick off our big training program for Zelly Trail, but I have two that they've already started training because they have, one has a half coming up the first weekend of March and the other she's doing like a Walt Disney World thing. Well, the one from March, you know, he's, he's running because his brothers are runners. And so he's like, well, I don't want to run their pace. You know, like they're, they're super fast, that sort of thing. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm a really pretty much on the 80, 20 perspective of like 80% of your runs should be slow endurance, conversational, that sort of thing. And then 20% sprinkled on. I love that book, 80, 20. Um, It's really helped me formulate. So I've given it to them and he'll send me screenshots and I'm like, bro, you're going too fast. Like we're running five (laughs) days, you know? And so now he's, he's, it's so funny because he sent me one yesterday and he's like, I wanted to send you this. He was like, I really concentrated on my pace because I didn't want to get scolded. You know, like (laughs) my scolding is is just, you know, I, I feel like in a lot of ways, um, I'm pretty upfront with people about like when we have training programs and I'm like, here's what you can expect. Um, I check in and I'm on them weekly. Like, Hey, how's it going? Is there anything you need to do? Um, For instance, we had one that he needed to take a a break from us for a little bit because life was just so hectic. But then he came back and he even told me, he was like, Allison, I I know that I should have taken a break. And I was like, I'm not going to be the one that tells you that you should stay. Like life happens. And again, it's that great, as you said, like allow grace to show up and give yourself that. There's enough negativity in this world and enough people, as you said, we are so comparison. And, and yeah, with elite runners. And again, it's what I try to tell people. I'm like, listen, I'm not being, I'm not being paid to be an elitist. I'm not being paid to go, you know, at camp and have somebody cook for me and all these things. That's great. That's, that's great that they have that opportunity. I don't have that. I still have family. I have kids and a husband and dogs and and life. And I don't want to miss out on that. And, and, and I think that's Mm. where my perspective of you allow running to come in and it be a, a, a part of not this whole encompassing, as you said, it's not who you are. It's a part of who you are. It's something that you get to do. And so, I mean, <laughs> they can try to look at me and tell me that. And I'm probably going to be like, if they sit on a chair, I'd be like, okay, but do you really, do you really want to do that? You can try, but I'm not going to write that program or I'm not going to do that. So I have a great core team that if somebody brings up some things and we'll communicate with each other. 
Um, so they'll be like, hey, we're doing this strength training or this or with yoga or one of my running mentors will mention something. Um, so we're we're a really good open group. You know, people can ask questions. Uh, there's there's nothing you can ask. I might say no. <laughs> I might say yes. no. I don't know. Yeah. And it's great because it's, it's really fostering again, like that community collaborative feeling that you are creating. Mm -hmm. And it just, to me, it just always makes me laugh when it's like, oh, but so-and-so is doing something. And it's like, okay, then go do them. (laughs) No, I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to be rude, but if that's what you want to do, then go do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming to me to ask me about it, it's because you are uncertain. So Mm -hmm. can we maybe look a little bit deeper into why you feel you need to do that? Can we kind of figure out like what else is going on? Because I honestly think a lot of us don't realize we're comparing ourselves to Mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. Like we just think like, oh, I want to do that. Like I I want what they have, so I'm going to do it. And it's like, okay, but wait, let's actually pull it back because what you are doing is you are comparing and in that comparison, you're not allowing yourself to be. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes you've got to point that out to people. So I love it because it's like, okay, I'm like, all right, I've got a good feel for your coaching style, right? Like we're going to communicate clearly. You can let me know what's going on. Your expectations, here are my expectations. I want you to know that this is what you can expect from me. Mm-hmm. This is what I expect from you. I've got a whole team of people supporting you. And then on top of that, there are those weekly check-ins where I'm going to assume that within those weekly check-ins, you're learning more about their life out of the run Mm -hmm. than simply what's on the run. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I like to highlight for people as well, where it's like, hey, your run coach is not just a plan creator. Mm, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're you're actually factoring in those lifestyle things that come into it. And I'm assuming even for yourself within that group coaching setting, sure, you can have a plan for the entire group, but there still has to be variation amongst the different, whether you have your run walker, whether Mm -hmm. you have someone who's walking, whether you have someone who's going for that PR and that sub 20 or whatever the case is, right? Like that that variation. So that's so much fun to hear that like the just... The group coaching, because I'm sure you get some personalities in that. <laughs> and it's and it's like going back to like everyone's got their story. And, right. it's, and it's also beautiful because I feel like once we focus in on the story, we're able to have more compassion mm-hmm. for the way mm-hmm. people show up and a little more context to understand like, okay, so when they show up and they say this, oh, I get why they're saying that. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like yeah. That, that one runner that wants to run, you know, faster then you're like oh that's right he did mention he wanted to do that so now I understand why he's been yeah. like going so hard on these group <laughs> runs like now I get it okay can we you know find the humanity in that and approach it um I have one final question and this is a question and I, I there's no right or wrong answer <laughs> but as someone who community is so important to you I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this. How can we wake, how can we, blah, 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 how can we make running more accessible and inclusive? Mm, I think just being there, allowing people to see what you're doing. Um, I I recently just learned how to do reels on Instagram. So that's been fun. Um, no, I, th- I think it's just, it's having conversations with people and, and saying, here we are, you know, and again, I, now that I've gotten to know different people's stories, I can relate better when somebody comes to me and they're like, oh, I don't know that I can do this. Oh, okay. Well, listen, I know this guy, I know this runner and this is their story. Like this is part of their story. So mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have to say like, Hey, go listen to the podcast. That would be great. But at least I have that, that common thread that I can say, you know what, I know somebody that was exactly like you. Um, and for me, I think one of the things that I've, I've seen, um, as far as like the value of, of coaching is, um, I had, again, one of the guys that he's already training ahead. Um, he sent me a message and he was like, thank you so much. He's like, now I understand the value of a coach of having somebody 
like, because he checks in, you know, and in that check-in, it's like, hey, man, you're doing great. Or, hey, like, let's slow it down just a little bit. You got four more days of this, you know? So it's like just having that rather than him going out and doing it on himself. Because that's what he was doing. Like, he was, hey, I found this plan. I'm just going to go do it. And, yeah, it sounds great. Anybody can pull from that. But, again, as you said, like, there's um, there's some people that may be like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Like, and there's so many different plans. Like, where do you even start at? Like, and, and I think now the conversations, now that I'm more comfortable with asking people like their story and sitting down now, it's nothing for me at the end of the race to go and like ask somebody like, well, how'd you do? And, you know, like, what's your story? And, and, you know, just connecting with them on a deeper level. I will say this about the running community kudos, because for the longest time, the misconception was even in the running community, you're not a runner unless you run the entire thing. Now run, walk thing, everybody's doing it. And that to me, I literally had a conversation a couple of weeks ago uh, with, I mean, she's an incredible athlete, incredible triathlete. And I really look up to her and she was like, you know, she was, I'm so glad that there's run walk because she had been injured trying mm-hmm. to prepare for a race. And then she was like, and but again, all these conversations I'm having with runners who have been runners, and when they started off running, that was their misconception too of like, well, I'm not a runner unless I run the whole thing. And I'm like, you're out here, you're doing more than the next person in that I did sleep in at 5 a.m. Yeah, listen. So it's yeah. Like, it, it's, it's, I am so proud of the running community in that aspect. And then, you know, they're coming along and they're saying, oh, so that's how you're coaching it. And I'm like, absolutely, we're doing endurance running. And in that, you're going to figure out, are you a 60, 30? Are you a 90, 30? Are you a 30, 30? Like, are you a, a one, two? Like, what are you when it comes to, you know, how you want to run? And so I think having people come out and I think I'm just so proud because when I look at our training programs, I look and I'm like, we have different people of, of different ages and we have different mm-hmm. backgrounds and again, different stories, different why. And I think always going back to that why and what you want to accomplish I think it's huge. And I, I think we shouldn't be afraid to, um, to, yeah, when somebody comes up to us, like you said, and, and they're like, hey, yeah, what about this program? You know, or what about this? Just to be honest, you know, it's not a territorial thing. I'm always no. open to, I'm always open up to, hey, let's try something new and I'll try anything once. You know, sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. There's a reason behind it. And as you said, getting to know that person and understanding it. But I really think uh, social media is huge. I think, um, we should really utilize it and, and say like, and again, as you said, it's not a bragging thing when you say your medals, you know, it's a bragging thing to say, look what I've done. Like I'm proud of my, I don't need the accolades from other people. I put in the work. I know what I did. This is me celebrating. And it's saying you can too, like you can come along this journey with us. You can have a run story. So I think that that's kind of like really just getting out there and just saying, Hey, like here I am, as you said, being vulnerable and saying, this is where I started at and this is where I'm at. And, and just having that common and denom- like having that common that common time together. Again, the heart emojis are coming out <laughs> with everything that you just said there because you know, even something like the post that I shared, I've gotten so in the beginning, you know, when I first started on Instagram, it was very much like accountability. Like I'm gonna oh, post absolutely. it. Like I was totally yeah. one of those like if you didn't post it, it didn't happen type of thing, <laughs> right? Like then I haven't, you know, I, I have, a, it's like a mixed relationship with social media where yeah. I'm like, I want to share. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want to share. And then usually when I do share, it's because I've had time to reflect of like, no, you mm. need to share so that people Absolutely. can see mm-hmm. that someone like you who looks maybe like them can do this as mm. well. And I think it's so wonderful too, even just what you're saying, a part of this, a part of the struggle of being a runner and the misconception around runner is that I feel like we get very egocentric with it. Like it was, oh, I had a bad day. And then it's like, no, no, no. Like you need those people to snap you out of it and be like, right. hey, remember there's a ton of people that aren't running. So like, I love, for instance, I think it it usually comes up after maybe the Boston Marathon, you know, like the statistics of this is the number of people who run marathons. This Mm. is the number of people who run Boston. This is the number of people who qualify for that. And I love seeing that because I'm like, we need that perspective. Mm -hmm. Like not everyone is doing this. Not everyone runs marathons. Not everyone runs races. Some people run 
purely for the community Absolutely. aspect of it. And I think, again, like as people who are already in the running community, I feel like we are the biggest advocates, the biggest mm -hmm. ambassadors, and we need to speak up to those things of like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Or yeah. you can do this and it can look like this. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is normal. This is <laughs> fine. This is again, to be celebrated mm -hmm. just as much. You know, I think of it in terms of, again, we're, we're talking, I, I always go back to the marathon because I feel like that's the one that everyone has such a like mystical, magical relationship <laughs> to. And it's like, Hey, like, yeah, that person who, who gets that BQ, that's wonderful. But you know, what's also wonderful that person who took six hours, seven mm -hmm. hours to the race. So mm -hmm. it's like, where are we? And again, like, yes, the running community is wonderful, but it's also like, Hey, running community, we can also do better. Like we can also oh, do better so that that person who does that six hour marathon they don't uh, like I and it's for me it's like I'm just very sensitive with numbers so anyone who <laughs> y'all are gonna know I'm very sensitive with numbers because it's the same of like oh I just ran three miles or oh it, it's no I don't want to tell you my time because I'm it took me a really long time like things like that I'm like no let's embrace it let's, let's celebrate. celebrate yeah absolutely oh, yeah you yeah. didn't just run three That's miles right. <laughs> you did three miles yeah tell yeah. me your time I want to be happy for mm -hmm. you because again it's that perspective of okay that just three miles for you, it's just three miles. And I also like to point out to people too, the context within which mm, those three miles absolutely. are happening, right? Because those three miles, if you're training for a 5k, that's actually a really big freaking deal. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I get it. You know, you can say, oh, it's just three miles when I'm marathon training, but it's still three miles. So I always like to be like, hey, let's kind of pull back. Let's pull back and actually allow ourselves to be proud of this. Exactly. Because yeah. Once we get into autopilot, and I think it connects to something you were saying, where it's like, we just take it for granted. We take our ability to do it for granted. And I feel like we just have to do a better job, everybody collectively, mm -hmm. of celebrating every single run. Absolutely. Every time yeah. we show up, regardless of how long it takes us, regardless of how much distance we do, celebrate it. Because mm -hmm. the more we celebrate, I mean, if I go to your run club and everyone's happy and you're doing your dinner for me, I'm like, wait, that's, I want to be there. Like, I don't even know what's happening, but I want to be, I want to be where I feel good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are in the running community currently, we have the ability to create that space for people who are new. Mm. And you know, when you feel good, you're going to keep doing what you're doing, right? Exactly. Like, none of us want to do what doesn't feel good. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for letting me go off. I'm like, that's the one thing that always drives me crazy. It's oh yeah. Like, no, I I'm with you. Yeah. I, I just, again, it's you, you said it perfectly when you said we're more than our numbers, we're more than our pace, we're more, we're more than our runner. And, and yes, like I, I listen, I, I love, running t-shirts. I love good swag, you know, like, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I am more than that. And I don't want to be put in a box like mm -hmm. that. Just like what you said about, I love that masterpiece painting that you were talking about like that. We're so many different things. And, and so, I, and I, I wish people would under understand that. Like, I don't know, maybe we should run with art. Maybe if we ran with art, people would be like, hmm. like yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> I think there, that, that seriously run as a giant canvas point that would be so awesome but I think it's I think and I'm gonna like bring us back full circle yeah that is the benefit of having a run coach just mm -hmm. one of many yeah your, your run coach is your cheerleader your plan creator your supporter but also your run coach is going to be someone that's going to help put things into perspective mm -hmm. that maybe other people in your life cannot do, will not do, are not able to do. So like, it's that it's, that's part of it. That's part of what you do. Part of what I try to do mm -hmm. of like really getting people to say, let's not beat ourselves up over this. 
yes, again, I'm, I, I don't ever want to take away from what people feel. Let's feel that. But then let's also put that into the greater context mm -hmm. of your life and of everyone in general. Yeah. Like not everybody runs, right? <laughs> like we're not everybody runs, but that's just, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting me go off on my little tangent and yeah, like <laughs> for, for understanding it. Cause it's, that's, I feel like red coaches have, have a special attunement to that particular thing. So I really appreciate it. Final request from you is if you can just tell us where we can get more information on you, website, Instagram, best way to reach out to you, just that. And then also the little part two to that is what do you have coming up that we can support you in or cheer you on in? Oh, yeah. So um, we have, we're on social media and Facebook. Um, it's Run Your Story podcast and training program. Um, and then we also have a website, uh, which is Run Your Story. So <laughs> Uh, there's that. It's a really cool website. Um, and then we have Azalea Trail, which is a really big race that's coming up. Um, just did a half uh, last weekend with a, a really good friend of mine. So in Pensacola. So we, mm -hmm. we love running Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then Azalea Trail. So that'd be March 25th. So that's what we have going on for that. And, you know, I think it goes back to what you said, uh, being the biggest cheerleader for your, for your, for your clients, because they also become your friends and they become your yeah. family. And I don't know, it's something about getting to see them cross the finish line and yeah, their family's there, but they want to see you like, and that that's everything to me. Like that, that's the value that I know of like, they're like, Hey, I, where's Allison? Like, I, I want to just, I want to be there, you know? And so that to me is like one of the coolest things is to be able to say, you know what, you're about to PR this thing you know, or, Hey, like to, to coach them along, you know? And I, I think that that is such a gift. That is such a, um, again, as I said, there's enough negativity in the world. I don't want to be a negative coach. I want to be the person that's going to tell you that you can, when you think that you can't. So, yeah. I'm not going to say anything else because I want to get at that. <laughs> Everyone. That's it. That's it. Thank you for yeah, listening thank you. and joining us. And thank you, Allison. It's just so beautiful. Everyone, I'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye. Thank you.